Welcome once again to Twice Told Parables, the program that offers a fresh, but not essentially different, telling of the parables of Jesus. For today's installment, we are proud to present The Importunate Neighbor, found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 through 8, a parable told to encourage us to be persistent in our prayers. Today's presentation features the talents of Robin Fairchild, Stanley Henson, Martin Ainsbury, and our own Kenny Bateman. And now, The Importunate Neighbor. Once upon a time, there was a computer analyst named Calvin. Calvin had a nice home in a nice neighborhood. Well, one night, as Calvin was preparing to go to bed, a knock came on his door. Answering the door, Calvin discovered his old childhood friend. Oh, old childhood friend, how good to see you. Uh, Come on in. Oh, and how good it is to see you, Calvin. Thank you. Oh, please sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Wow, I can't believe you're here. It's been such a long time since we've seen each other. And here you are, my old childhood friend. My old childhood friend. Uh, you, You don't remember my name, do you? Well, no, no, I don't. But I do remember that you're from my childhood and that we were friends and that you're old. I mean, you're older, uh, but say you look tired and worn. You must have had a long journey, unless what I'm seeing is just how much older you are now than you were when we were childhood friends. No, actually, I did have a long journey. A long journey. Well, you must be tired and hungry. Yes, I am tired and hungry, Uh, but I'm more hungry than I am tired. Well then, I'll get you something to eat, and I have a spare bedroom here where you can sleep in. Oh, that's very kind of you. Oh, it's the least I can do for my old childhood friend. Here, I'll take you into that spare bedroom right now. Well, could you give me the food first? I believe I mentioned that I'm more hungry than I am tired. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, A good hearty meal for my old childhood friend. Calvin sat his old childhood friend down at the dining room table and went into the kitchen to make his guest a sandwich. But when he got there, he found that he didn't have any bread to make the sandwich with. Ah, man, I meant to go shopping today. I just got so busy analyzing computers that I didn't have any time. Uh, But I can't just let my old childhood friend go hungry. That just wouldn't be right. Uh, I would go out and buy something, but, but it's too late. All of the stores are closed. Hmm, what should I do? Oh, I know. My good next door neighbor should have some extra food he can give me. I'll just go over there and ask him for some. And so Calvin went out the back door and over to his neighbor's house. Although all of the lights were out, he knocked on the door. No one stirred within the house, so he knocked again. And again. Finally, a light came on in the upstairs bedroom just above the door. The window opened, and Calvin's neighbor looked out to see what was going on. Uh, What's going on out there? Hey, good next-door neighbor. I'm sure glad you're up. Well, I wasn't, but I am now. Well, that's good, because I need you to lend me a loaf of bread. You see, my old childhood friend has stopped over to see me. He's come a long way, and he's tired and hungry, but he's more hungry than he is tired. Well, I went into the kitchen to make him a sandwich, and I realized I don't have any bread. Well, go to the store and buy some. Uh, But I can't. All of the stores are closed. But I thought Mr. Handley's convenience store was open 24 hours. Uh, It is, but not in a row. So you're knocking on my door in the middle of the night to tell me that? Well, no, not just to tell you that. I also need you to lend me a loaf of bread. What? But it's the middle of the night. The door is locked. My wife and children are all in bed. Oh, leave me alone. But good next door neighbor, you have to give me a loaf of bread. If you don't give me a loaf of bread, I can't make my old childhood friend a sandwich. And if I can't make my old childhood friend a sandwich, he'll have to go to bed hungry. I can't do that to my old childhood friend. He's my old childhood friend. But I've already told you, it's the middle of the night, the door is locked, my wife and children are in bed. Oh, good night. Hmm, that's odd. Undeterred, Calvin knocked again. 
Go next door neighbor. Get up. What is it now? Well, like I was saying, this old childhood friend of mine has come on a long journey, and he's hungry. But I can't make him a sandwich because I don't have any bread. So I need you to give me a loaf of bread. But I've already told you, it's the middle of the night. My wife and children are all in bed. Go away. Please, good next door neighbor, please. You keep calling me your good next door neighbor, but you don't remember my name, do you? Uh, well, no, I guess I don't. Well, you're not making any points for yourself here. All right, I don't remember your name, but I do know that you live next door to me, and that you're my neighbor, and that you're good. Well, none of that matters. It's too late. We're all in bed. Come back tomorrow. But that won't work. Tomorrow's too late. I need that loaf of bread now. Good next door neighbor, get up. Calvin continued to plead with his neighbor for a good half an hour. Finally, his neighbor realized, Oh, this guy isn't going to give up. I'll never get back to sleep with him pounding on my door all night. Well, the only way I'm going to get rid of him is if I give him what he wants. Calvin's neighbor wasn't willing to give Calvin a loaf of bread out of good next door neighbor neighborliness, but he was because of Calvin's importunate persistence. All right, all right, I'll get out of bed. I'll come downstairs and I'll give you a loaf of bread. Just stop pounding on my door. Thanks, good next door neighbor. Yes, yes, just let me get back to sleep. Oh, sure, no problem. And so Calvin returned to his own home with a loaf of bread. He came in through the back door and into the kitchen and set out to make his old childhood friend a sandwich. But then he made a startling discovery. Oh, that's right. Along with being out of bread, I'm also out of lunch meat. I can't make my old childhood friend a sandwich with no lunch meat. Hmm, what to do? What? Oh, I know who should have some. Hey, good next door neighbor. There's one more thing. Jesus told this parable as a way to show us what our attitude should be when we pray. We can come to God the Father with confidence and boldness. Unlike the neighbor in the story, God is not put off by our request, but we must be persistent in our prayers. Asking and continuing to ask, seeking and continuing to seek, knocking and continuing to knock, and to do all of this with the confidence that God is willing and able to give us good things.